We jumped ahead and did chapter 15 about equilibria, and now we're going to go back and, and proceed in order. This is chapter 12 about liquid solids and intermolecular forces. Have you ever wondered why things taste the way they do? How does your tongue distinguish that some things taste good and some things taste bad? Have you ever thought about that? It's an interaction between the molecules in the food that you eat and specialized cells, receptor cells, on your tongue. And so those cells have molecules in them as well. And so it's the way those molecules interact that send signals to your brain that, oh, I like this, or, oh, that's nasty, spit it out now. So coffee tends to taste bitter, which is why I don't like it. I can't stand coffee. I've tried, you know, it would just be a much more convenient way of ingesting caffeine, but I just I can't stand it. Coffee tastes bitter. So it's the molecules in coffee that taste bitter. They, they react with receptors on your tongue, and that interaction is due to what are called intermolecular forces. Inter meaning between. Intercollegiate sports are sports played between colleges. Okay, intercollegiate between. So intermolecular forces are attractive forces that exist between molecules. These are not bonds that are inside the molecule. Those are intramolecular forces. These are between. These intermolecular forces are essential for many physiological processes, not just tasting things, but many of the reactions that occur in your body, and your body is a giant chemical factory. Okay, there's just all kinds of chemical reactions going on. And a lot of those are dependent on intermolecular forces. There are some very specific ones, like tasting, and then there are some that are less specific and very general that exist between all molecules and atoms. And these intermolecular forces, which we'll study in probably more detail than you would like, um, these are responsible for the existence of liquids and solids. If there were no forces of attractions between molecules, we would have no liquids, no solids, everything would be a gas, and life couldn't exist. So intermolecular forces are pretty important. The physical state of a, of a sample of matter, and by physical state we mean whether it's in the gas, liquid, or solid state, is going to depend on the strength of those attractive forces between the molecules relative to the amount of thermal energy that that sample has. Thermal energy um, is related to temperature. It's related to kinetic energy. We've mentioned before that all atoms are in constant random motion, and that as we increase the temperature, the atoms move faster. Now, in a solid like the bench top, they're vibrating. And so that's like you guys right now. You're sitting in your seats, and you're all stationary relative to each other, and yet you're moving. You're, you know, looking around, you're breathing, you're blinking, you know, stuff like that. You're, you're not absolutely still, and neither are solid molecules. As you increase the temperature, you can imagine the, the students, you students, getting more agitated, okay? And you're fidgeting, and finally you get to this point of just, know, you can't be still anymore. And that's when something melts and goes into the liquid state, and now people are milling about the room. And then when the kinetic energy increases more, then the forces, these intermolecular forces that are holding us together, are no longer important, and people just go zinging off in different directions. So if something has weak intermolecular forces relative to the amount of thermal energy, then that substance is going to be a gas at that temperature. If the intermolecular forces are strong, then it will be a liquid or a solid. So if it has weak forces that hold it together, it takes less thermal energy to cause the particles to fly apart. Does that make any sense? So intermolecular forces are what's holding things together. Thermal energy is what tends to make things want to fly apart. 